Hello everyone, my name is Angelos Petropoulos and I'm a program manager for .NET. Together, we're going to look at what's new for .NET, ASP.NET, and Azure developers in Visual Studio 2022. And here's what we're going to cover today. Let's take a look at the Razor editor first. We've added Razor specific features and support for some general C Sharp editing goodies like format document and insert missing using statements. Renaming anywhere will now update references across all Razor files, even ones that are currently not open in the editor. Within the Razor editor itself, we can now rename Razor components straight from their tag. I love features like this that let me stay in the flow. And of course, F12, go to definition. I don't know how I lived without this so far. And speaking of features that help us stay in the flow, we can now also create new Razor components straight from their tags as we're typing them in the editor. If the C Sharp code is getting a bit long and we would rather work with it using a code behind file, we can now get there instantly using the new extract block to code behind refactoring. Now check this out. We're in the general C Sharp editor now applicable to all project types, and we have two adornments of the left margin here. One is next to the overridden method on initialized, and lets us navigate to the overridden definition. The second one is next to the class declaration and is letting us know what base types this class is inheriting from, in this case component base, and what interfaces this class is implementing. A fantastic quality of life improvement, especially when dealing with partial classes like this one. We have a new option on the project right-click context menu, remove unused references. On top of cleaning up unnecessary using statements, Visual Studio identifies unused packages and offers to clean them up, all in one go. Another nice quality of life improvement that helps keep your NuGet restore efficient. All right, here we are in the startup.cs of our server project, and our user statements don't mention anything about Entity Framework. We don't have our database connection implemented yet, and we want to copy paste the code from our prototype project. Now, the code we're pasting is making use of Entity Framework specific packages, for which in the past we would have to go back to the top and insert a using statement. But Visual Studio 2022 saves us the trouble and does it for us. And speaking of saving us the trouble, add null check refactoring. What a great time saver. Next is hat reload for ASP.NET Core, which for me is the ultimate productivity booster. I very much like to make small changes as I go along and double check them. I have already started my Blazor WebAssembly project with Control F5, and from the Hat Reload toolbar menu, I've enabled Hat Reload on File Save. So when I make changes after I save the file, those changes will be applied to the running application. All right, let's take a look at the app. It's a basic pizza ordering app. First thing I'm noticing is that the images for the pizzas are not appearing. Let's take a look at index.razor to see if we can figure out what's going on. Ah, the issue is relatively simple. Uh, background image has been misspelled. Let's go ahead and fix that. Now, keep an eye on the browser. With hard reload, as I control S to save the file, I expect my fix to make the pizza images appear. So control S. All right, my pizzas are there. Let's go ahead and order one. I like to build my own. So I'll start with basic cheese and I'll add basil after that. Okay, uh, it looks like it doesn't let us add another topping. Let's see if we can figure out why by looking at configure pizza dialog .razor. All right, here's the issue. It's limiting us to just one topping because of this if statement here. Let's change this to a six. And um, as I'm about to save by pressing control S, let's keep an eye on the toppings dialog still running in the browser. I'm pressing control S. And all right, we can see that the max toppings message went away and now we can continue ordering. We'll, uh, we'll add this pizza to the order. We'll add a buffalo chicken pizza as well. And before we fix up the styling of our order summary here, we need to add a total row and an actual order button. So let's go back to index to razor. We have some code ready to go that we will paste in here. Now again, let's keep an eye on the browser window as we save using control S. Beautiful. 
We can see that the total is working correctly already. I'm sure that order button works flawlessly. So I'm not going to wait any longer and I'll go ahead and address those CSS issues. Uh, the great thing about CSS hat reload is that we don't have to even wait to save the file. As soon as the contents are syntactically correct, Visual Studio will automatically apply the changes. So here I'm updating the color and the font size of the string your order in the order summary. And you can see that the file isn't saved yet, but the changes have already been applied. Awesome. All right, let's paste some more CSS styles in here and get the order summary looking nice and clean. Beautiful. That, that looks great. Now let's talk web live preview for ASP.NET Framework. On the bottom left corner of Visual Studio, we have the design and split view buttons. These give us access to the same designer. If I click the design button, I get a full page design view. And if I click on the split button, I get the designer opened in a horizontal tab group. And these are typical Visual Studio windows, so I can pin them and move them around as usual. As I select items in the designer, the editor part is kept in sync. As I type into the editor, the designer is kept in sync with the changes. It works with typical new content like new lines. It works with controls like this dropdown. It works with selected items, um, all, all the usual suspects. Again, no need to save. With text, we can also go the other way around. I can edit text in the designer and the editor is automatically updated. Here, we are in a CSS file and we can see that the changes are being applied to the designer as I type. This is a great productivity booster to be able to see CSS changes applied immediately. A fantastic improvement is the ability to work with real live data. In the designer, by disabling inspect mode in the designer, we can interact with and even update live data straight from the designer surface without F5 in the application. Drag and drop is of course part of this experience and with the action panel, we get the view showing live data with just a few clicks. All right. Let's also add the list box as well and add a few items to go with it. Just a typical scenario showing the designer's capabilities. Again, using the action panel. And finally asking the designer to apply the changes. One of the most common operations is creating default event handlers for various controls. That's very easy to do by just double-clicking on its respective control in the designer. In all cases, the markup is modified to add the event handler and the code behind is modified to add the empty method. Support for third-party controls is first class. Here, we're looking at a C Sharp web application. It's using Telerik controls, which have action panel support. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Uh, we'll move the plus icon to the right of the word new using the actual panel. We'll get the designer to update. Great. Now, still within the context of ASP.NET Framework, we have support for MVC and Razor pages. So here we have an MVC application, and you will see that as I am modifying the markup, the view is also updated automatically. Now, Web Life Preview also works in a browser. So if I prefer to work with a browser window open next to Visual Studio instead of the Designer tab, I can do just that. And I can even have multiple browser windows open all at the same time. Here, I have three views, 
And as I'm changing things, all three views are updating automatically as I type. Finally, let's take a look at our new GitHub Actions tooling when deploying to Azure. I'm going to right-click Publish on my project. I'll pick Azure and App Service Linux as my destination. And here, VS is letting me manage my Azure resources without leaving the IDE. I can provision new ones, but in this case, I will select an existing one. And check this out. Now, here, Visual Studio knows this project is under Git source control. And Visual Studio knows that my remote is github.com. So it's letting me know that I have the option of deploying my application through CI CD using GitHub Actions. And I'm going to do just that. By clicking Finish, I'm asking Visual Studio to find the most appropriate GitHub Actions template for me for this specific project. And now that Visual Studio has done that, it's letting me know that this workflow is ready to, and configured to trigger on push. And I don't even have to worry about the published profile secret. Visual Studio has gone ahead and downloaded the published profile from the Azure portal, added it as a secret to my GitHub repo, and wired up this workflow to make use of that GitHub secret during deployment. So all I have to do is follow the instructions and get this workflow committed and pushed remotely. I'll do that by opening the Git changes window. I'll type in my commit message. I'll commit and push. All right, Visual Studio is letting me know that my workflow is running, and it's also telling me who and what triggered it. It was me and the push I just did. It's also going to tell me when it completes, but if I'm really curious about exactly what is going on every step of the way, I can go check that out. Here, I can inspect every step of the run and look at the details. Oh, and the build is done. So back in Visual Studio, I also get greeted by a successful run message. All right, that's all for today. I hope this inspired you to go download Visual Studio 2022 and check out the new features for yourself. Thank you and take care.